Despite James' relatively young age, his subordinates always called him Mr. Thompson. And now his assistant called him and said, Mr. Thompson, you asked to be reminded that today you have that event dedicated to the opening of the Volunteer Center? Thank you, Dorothy. I'm about to leave for it now. James answered and warily rubbed his temples with his fingers. By the age of 28, the man had already earned his first million dollars and was the owner of a large trading company. Of course, some evil tongues, as well as his competitors, said that James simply got lucky, that he was simply in the right place at the right time. But those who knew the young millionaire personally were well aware that it wasn't the case. James owed his success to hard work and perseverance worthy of respect and admiration. At the same time, few people knew that the young millionaire grew up in a poor family and that his father was a heavy drinker, while his mother worked as a cleaner in a roadside motel. James' childhood was difficult and left an indelible mark on him. The boy often helped his mother clean the motel, dreaming that one day he would grow up and become a successful businessman. Unfortunately, being born in a poor neighborhood of Chicago, this was an almost impossible undertaking. However, against all odds, James managed to overcome all the hardships and go to college. Having received a degree in economics, the determined young man went into business as he'd always dreamed. It's hard to imagine what James had to go through before achieving his success. The man knew that he had no one to count on but himself. Both James' subordinates and his business partners knew him as a man of his word, who always treated people well, which helped him earn their respect and admiration. The young millionaire never divided people into good or bad, poor or rich. James treated all people equally and believed that everyone deserved to be treated with respect. But his business success wasn't the only thing that James Thompson could boast about. In addition to making lucrative deals and signing impressive contracts, the young millionaire was a well-known philanthropist and the founder of several charitable foundations. Thus, that day, instead of relaxing on his well-deserved day off, James drove up to the brand new two-story building. The building was supposed to become a volunteer center for the homeless and people in difficult life situations. James bought this building a year ago, and at first, no one could understand why he did it. And only now, when the premises were renovated and the staff was hired, everything fell into place. To the surprise of the guests and James's business partners attending the gala, James arrived alone. The fact was that after the death of his mother, the young businessman had been living all alone for several years. Few people knew that James had already been in love and that his love story ended badly, leaving behind the feeling of disappointment and a painful wound in his heart. James wasn't wealthy back then and was just beginning his ascent to the heights of his financial Olympus. Unfortunately, his fiance didn't appreciate the efforts of her future husband and cheated on him with the son of a local billionaire. James didn't make a scene to sort things out. Instead, he simply asked his unfaithful fiance to leave and cut her out of his life forever. Of course, there were many more women in the young businessman's life, but none of them fit the role of his wife. Shaking off his memories, James got out of the car and walked towards the group of the center employees who were all waiting for him. At that moment, someone softly touched the businessman's hand, causing him to stop. James turned his head to the right and saw a frail old woman in front of him, dressed in old but rather neat clothes. The stranger didn't look like an ordinary homeless person, which was common in any big city. Sir, do you have a couple of dollars? Can you help an old woman get some bread? The woman said in a quiet voice, barely distinguishable in the eternal noise of the metropolis. James's hand reached for his wallet. The young millionaire didn't know exactly how much money he had on him, but he was ready to give the old woman everything he had. There were several hundred dollar bills in his pocket, which James immediately handed over to the old woman. Here, take this ma'am, it's all that I have on me. If you need help, please contact my center. It will open one of these days, the businessman said. Thank you, sir. I'm not homeless. I need it for my granddaughter. She's sick. So all the money we have is spent on medications, the old woman whispered with tears in her eyes. 
Then she turned around with a sad sigh and looked towards the noisy crowd waiting for the volunteer center to open. At that moment, James saw something he didn't notice before. The fact was that the old woman standing in front of him had very strange earrings. They were oddly shaped and James could have sworn that he'd seen them before. Mrs. Taylor, is that really you? I'm sorry I didn't recognize you sooner. I'm James, James Thompson. You used to call me Little Prince as a child. Do you remember? The young millionaire exclaimed, having a hard time restraining his excitement. A spark of recognition flashed in the old woman's eyes and her face changed. Clearly, she remembered James. To the great chagrin of the millionaire, they didn't manage to talk more, since the opening of the volunteer center couldn't be delayed any longer. After asking the old lady to wait for him at the entrance, James walked towards the crowd of reporters and other attendees of the opening ceremony. The formalities took about an hour, and when the young millionaire could finally go back outside, the old woman was nowhere to be found. Why didn't Mrs. Taylor wait for me? And what happened to this old woman's granddaughter? I think her name was Nancy, James said, puzzled. At that moment, the young millionaire's mind got clouded with memories of the distant past, which couldn't really be called happy. His family used to live in the suburbs of Chicago at the time, and Amanda Taylor was the neighbor of the Thompson family. The sweet and caring woman often helped James's mother and even let her borrow some money from time to time. Amanda Taylor's granddaughter was still very young back then, so the 10-year-old James was both her babysitter and a friend. Nancy's mother died during childbirth, and she never knew her father. Therefore, when Robert Thompson would come home from work, drunk, little James knew where he could run to hide from his father's wrath. Amanda Taylor was very kind to the boy and often read him stories. His favorite was the Little Prince. That's where his nickname Little Prince came from. The age difference between him and little Nancy was six years, and the boy considered her his sister. It was then that James saw Mrs. Taylor's strange earrings. They belonged to my grandmother. My grandfather made them. He was a well-known jeweler in the area, back when airships were still flying in the air. You've probably never even heard of them. The elderly woman explained with a smile. Wow, so they're really old. Like the treasures of the pirates? Whispered James admiringly. Amanda Taylor winked at the boy and ruffled his coarse, unruly hair in response. Unfortunately, after James' mother was offered a new job, they had to move to another neighborhood, which is why he lost touch with Amanda Taylor for so many years. And now, after such a long time, James faced visions of his past once again, which he never managed to forget. In order to find Amanda Taylor, the young millionaire had to resort to the services of a private detective. The fact was that five years ago, Amanda and her daughter moved somewhere, and now another family lived at their old address. It took about a week for the private detective to find information about them, but when James finally found their new address, his joy knew no bounds. Deciding not to put things off, the young businessman went to see Amanda Taylor and her granddaughter, Nancy. It didn't take him long to find the house he was looking for on Park Street. It was a one-story, simple building with red tiles and ivy-colored walls. James got out of the car and walked towards the gate, which had slanted to one side. But before he could take even a couple of steps, the door of the house opened and Amanda Taylor appeared on the threshold, pushing a wheelchair with the young woman in front of her. That must be Nancy. What happened? Why is she in a wheelchair? Questions flashed through the mind of the young millionaire. At that moment, Amanda Taylor looked up and saw James coming up to the gate. The old woman's eyes immediately filled up with tears and a smile spread across her wrinkled face. Having greeted Nancy and her grandmother, James immediately started asking them questions. Why didn't you wait for me, Mrs. Taylor? You could have turned to me for help sooner. The young millionaire asked reproachfully. Ah, my dear little prince. I was ashamed of the fact that I sank so low and had to beg for money on the street. But I had no other choice. A year ago, Nancy got hit by a drunk driver who turned out to have very influential friends. A compression fracture of the spine, a wheelchair. Her fiancé immediately left her 
and the person who had run her over remained unpunished. Amanda Taylor answered with a sad sigh. After her grandmother's words, Nancy lowered her eyes in embarrassment, afraid to even look in James's direction. But isn't there anything the doctors can do about it? Isn't there some kind of surgery they could do? The medicine is very advanced nowadays. There's virtually nothing the doctors can't do now. James blurted out. But Amanda Taylor only shook her head and answered with undisguised bitterness in her voice. That's only for those who have money that doctors can virtually do anything. But for a poor old woman like myself, paying for this kind of surgery is simply impossible. Having heard Mrs. Taylor out, James looked at Nancy, who has turned into a beautiful young woman. She looked like a fairy from some fairy tale whose wings were clipped by an evil witch. Could I really not find the money for Nancy's surgery? She was like a sister to me when I was little. Even if I have to sell my business, it would still be worth it. James thought and hurried to reassure the old woman. Of course, at this point, Amanda Taylor wasn't exactly convinced that James could help them. But the young millionaire was very determined and he wasn't going to back down. First of all, James called all the hospitals that performed surgeries related to the injuries to the musculoskeletal system. Then, having learned how much money was needed for the treatment and subsequent rehabilitation, he took out a loan secured by his company. The amount turned out to be huge even for the young millionaire since it was difficult for him to withdraw so much cash from his company. All this time, Amanda Taylor followed the attempts of James, her little prince, to raise the amount required for the surgery, afraid of getting her hopes up. In addition to the issue of Nancy's surgery, the young millionaire also turned to the highest courts of the United States in order to punish the woman's offender. It had long been known that confidence and pressure works wonders. Thus, the fact that the person responsible for the accident was brought to justice six months later could definitely be called a wonder. But this wasn't the only thing that made Amanda Taylor happy. Thanks to James's help, the spinal surgery was a success and the specialists of the medical center were confident that Nancy wouldn't only be able to walk, but would be able to dance at her own wedding. The fact was that from the first days and throughout the entire course of Nancy's rehabilitation at the clinic, the medical staff there called James Thompson her fiance. Meanwhile, the young people only smiled mysteriously, but didn't refute their assumption and on the contrary, even supported it. By the time Nancy was discharged from the hospital, they were no longer hiding the fact that they'd become a couple. Looking at the happy Nancy and James, Amanda Taylor thanked the universe for giving her granddaughter a man who was little prince in childhood, but grew up to be a real king.